Hello! I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and you're at the beginning of this series, Intro to Speaker Building. Today we'll be doing an overview of speaker building and taking the process step by step. I find speaker building to be one of the most rewarding DIY projects I've come across. So rewarding, in fact, building my first speaker in 2011 led me to starting my own speaker building business, Salvage Audio, a year later. I think one of the best parts of building your own speakers is the immediate gratification you get once you've completed the project. What you've built actually does something like really incredible, and I'm, I'm sure they're gonna be the best speakers you've ever heard. They're also something you can continue to use for years to come. I mean, every time you sit down to listen to music, you'll be reminded of that gratification you got from completing that project. Okay, so let's get into it. Really, you start this journey at a fork in the road. Right off the bat, you have to make a decision. Should you just buy a speaker building kit? Should you use speaker building plans? Or should you design everything yourself? Let's talk about each option. So there's a ton of great speaker building kits out there that are already designed and proven to sound great. And if you're brand new to making anything, um, you should probably consider this option. So there's a large range of complexity that's offered within these kits. So some of the kits come with just the drivers. Uh, others come with drivers plus crossover components. And then there's some kits that come with everything. So the drivers, crossover components, and even the wood uh, that you need for the enclosure. And you'll still learn a ton while making one of these kits, uh, especially if you watch my videos while you're making it and try to reverse engineer what the creators might have been thinking when they were making the decisions uh, when building the kit. So I'll link some of my favorite kits down in the description. Your second option is to follow build plans. Using build plans is a great option as a compromise between doing everything yourself and using a kit. You'll have a guide to build something that you know is gonna sound good, uh, but you also have the flexibility to modify it uh, if that's what you're looking for. There are lots of great build plans out there if you wanna do some digging. I also have my own build plans that I offer for download on my website. I have plans for Bluetooth speakers, powered speakers, passive speakers, um, all sorts of stuff. You can check them out by following this link or I'll link in the description. So your third option is designing everything yourself. Designing your own speakers is probably one of the most fun and confusing and exciting and frustrating things you can do, but it's totally worth it. Have you ever heard the saying, it's all about the journey, not the destination? Well, to me, that's what speaker designing is all about. If you consider yourself a maker or a builder uh, and you have the curiosity needed, you're gonna learn so much from designing your own. So even if you've never made speakers before, uh, making mistakes, then fixing those mistakes and learning from that is gonna make you such a better and more knowledgeable maker than you were before. And uh, I think that's kind of what this is about. Now, cost is obviously a deciding factor when making this decision. And I think understanding your personal goals in the project uh, will help. If you're on a decent sized budget and your main goal for this project is to get great sounding speakers when you're done and maybe learn a few things along the way, I definitely think a kit is what you're looking for. But if your goal is to learn how great speakers are designed and how they work and you're willing to put in the time to do that, plus the time to fix your mistakes and to patch the wall where you threw something through it, <laughs> um, I definitely think designing your own speakers is, is what you're looking for. Also, if you're on a really limited budget, uh, you can design your speakers in accordance to that budget. So if you are deciding to design your own, there's about eight steps involved in making your speakers. I'm gonna briefly go over each step in this video, uh, but I'm also gonna be making individual in-depth videos for each of these steps as well. And I'll throw up a link on the screen to those videos as we go through each step. There'll also be a list of the videos down in the description. All right, here we go. Step one, choose an enclosure type. So if you're just getting started, you're probably deciding between a sealed enclosure or a ported enclosure. Um, if you have the skills though, there's many enclosure types from passive radiator to horns to transmission lines. Just know that some get very complicated. So a sealed enclosure is gonna be the easiest to design and build 
while a portate enclosure is going to be a little more design heavy and complicated. Um, but if you have any experience in woodworking, um, you should be totally fine. Step two, choose a crossover type. There's two way, there's 2.1 way, there's three way, 3.1 way, there's four way, um, or you can go super simple and forego the crossover altogether and just put a full range speaker in there. There's plenty of options with this. So all we're really doing here is deciding how much of the frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz that we want to actually use and how many ways we want to split that spectrum up. A two-way system is a great place to start. Uh, you'll be splitting that spectrum up two ways. Uh, a woofer will cover the lower frequencies and a tweeter will cover the higher frequencies. And remember, the complexity and cost of your build does increase with the amount of ways that you split the spectrum. Step three, choose your drivers. Many factors go into deciding what drivers to use in your system, but the main factor is what crossover type you decided to use in the last step. Depending on which type you chose will determine how many speakers and what type of speakers you'll include into your system. So if you chose the two-way crossover system, you'll need a tweeter for the highs, uh, but one that reaches into the lower highs as well, so you can cross over into the woofer, which will handle the mids and the lows. Pay close attention to your driver's data sheets so you can see what frequency ranges your drivers are designed for. Step four, design your enclosure. To design your enclosure, you'll need to either use modeling software, something like Basebox Pro, or you can use online calculators to determine the best size and dimensions for your speaker enclosures. So you'll use the Thiel Small or TS parameters that are found on your driver's data sheets. Um, you'll enter those into the software and the software will give you uh, an approximation of how your drivers will sound, how they'll perform uh, within various sizes of speaker enclosures. You should probably be doing this while you're deciding which speakers to use. Um, that way you can test out a few combinations and see what you think is gonna sound best. Step five, design your crossover. This is a step where you can take two roads, uh, either pre-designed or you designed. There are good pre-made crossovers out there. Um, what you'll do is you'll find where you need to cross over your speakers and then you'll go out and find a pre-made crossover that gets as close as you can to your crossover point. Now crossover design can be really complex, but if you're interested in the subject and you wanna learn how it works, I definitely suggest making your own. This is where a lot of the meat of speaker design lives. So if you really wanna know about how good speakers are designed, this is the hole you should dive down into. One thing you can consider is keeping your crossovers outside of the enclosures or in a spot that's easily accessible within the enclosure. And what this does is it allows you to be able to tweak and change your crossovers once you're done with the speakers and see what that does to the sound. Step six, build your enclosure. So this is one of my favorite parts of the project, actually getting my hands dirty and building something. One important part of this step is deciding what materials you wanna use while constructing the enclosure. I found that dense hardwoods and plywoods tend to sound better uh, than less dense softer woods. MDF, uh, quality plywoods, and pine are all great choices. Step seven, the test. Before buttoning everything up with finish, you wanna make sure everything is working properly. So load up your cabinets with the drivers and your crossovers and wire everything together and see how they sound. If you need to make any adjustments to your crossover or your ports, uh, now is a great time to do it. Step eight, the finish. A big part of why I love building speakers is making them look great. I think it's such a waste when great sounding speakers look like generic garbage. So I think finishing is super important. There's obviously a bunch of different ways that you can go about finishing your speakers from paint to stains to hardwoods. Um, pick something that fits your aesthetic and take your time doing it. 
There are millions of different opinions on how to do each of these steps. And there's probably someone who doesn't agree with these steps at all. <laughs> um, but the reason why there's so many opinions is because there's not one right way to build speakers. So listen or read to a bunch of different opinions and make a decision on what you think is best. Worst case scenario, you make a big mistake and then you just end up learning more than you were expecting to learn. The most important part of all of this is to have fun. So go make some speakers. I hope this helped.